Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nora and on this channel I mostly talk about fragrances. And in today's video I am going to share with you 14 fragrances made by Cécile Zaroquian. One of the most talked about perfumers in the recent years. She is the nose behind Nishane Ani, Amouage Material, Amouage Epic and a lot more. So I ordered via yeah, last year this discovery set of Cecilia Zarokian fragrances. Uh, it's not available anymore. I bought it from uh, Jubois or Jubois uh, website. They come out regularly with different discovery sets and I find it an amazing way to test some new fragrances. And the moment I saw that they have one of Cecilia Zarokian, I immediately purchased it. I was planning on doing a first impression on this discovery set when I first purchased it. I actually filmed that video, but somehow I lost it. And I decided not to refilm the whole thing. But I thought since today is Women's International Day, that I would shade the light on some female perfumers. And the first name that came to my mind is Cécile Zaroquian. So today I'm going to tell you all about Cécile Zaroquian and her creation. So if you love Cécile Zaropian or if you want to know more about her creations apart from the very famous one, then please keep on watching. So Cécile Zaropian is a French perfumer. Uh, she is the nose behind, as I said, um, a lot of very, very famous fragrances like Nishane Ani. I think Ani is the most famous a fragrance of her that a lot of people know about. See, she is also the nose behind two of very famous Amouage fragrances. Uh, epic woman and also the one that came out last year material woman she is an independent perfumer uh, and has her own company and she made a lot of fragrances with very big brands like Amouage, Nishane, uh, Laboratorio Olfativo, Julie Mad, Jacques Fat and a lot more so I have here 14 as I said I decided to go through these fragrances in a way that will illustrate her style, her signature in perfumes. So the first thing to note, she is more into oriental. She did create some fresh fragrances, like for example, the first ones that I'm, we are going to talk about, and that is green water. And this is your typical cologne, citrusy, aromatic fragrance. Fun fact about this fragrance is that uh, the original formula was released in 1947. Then was reformulated, I think, in the 90s. And the latest version was in 2015 by Ceci Zarokian. And if I remember correctly, she said in one of her interviews that she actually recreated the original one that was released in, um, in 47. And you can really get it. It's an old school, typical cologne, fresh uh, with a lot of citruses and a very heavy minty touch. It's quite a refreshing and pleasant fragrance, but I don't think that this is a fragrance that really represents her style. Overall, it's a nice fragrance. It's fresh, it's aromatic, being a little bit masculine and has a good longevity and sillage for this kind of colognes. So that was Green Water. The next fresh fragrance uh, from the Discovery set is Aqua Six. I think it's Latin, for Jules Mat. And this is a very nice marine fresh fragrance that reminds me a little bit of the style of uh, fragrances from Goldfield and Banks. It has a slightly sweetness in the background, but it's very refreshing, aquatic. If you love fragrances like Blue Cypress from Goldfield and Banks, you would definitely love this one and here I can see a little bit of the style or the DNA of Sisi Zarokia. It has in the base labdanum and guayacut, two of the notes that I at least noted that she uses a lot in fragrances and also this fragrance for a fresh aquatic fragrance does last very long and does project nicely I would say moderate sillage and it's moderate to long lasting so for a marine fresh fragrance it definitely performs very, very, very good. So that was uh, Aqua Sixtius uh, 
from Julie Matt. And these were the only two fresh fragrances in the discovery set. Now let's move to floral fragrances. And with floral fragrances in general, she tends to do spicy oriental style of florals. Uh, the first one I have here is Chuchur San from MDCI and this brand do perfumes inspired by characters or historical figures. And Chuchur San is the main character of Madame Butterfly and I find she did an amazing job with the inspiration. So you will find some notes that are typical of the Japanese style or culture. So you have yuzu, you have cherry blossom, peony and tea. But it's not a light floral or a very delicate floral. This is a floral fragrance with a bite to it. I find that her florals, there is always like a kick, a bite, a spiciness in the fragrance. It has also lychee, so it's a little bit fruity. A very beautiful feminine fragrance that lasts quite long and has a moderate to strong projection. I really, really like this one. It's one of my favorites, actually. So that was Cho Cho San. Next is Rose Tuberose from Coudre. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. This is one of the oldest uh, perfume houses and I didn't smell anything else from that brand, but I don't know. Um, when I smelled this, I found that it represents somehow the brand because if you see the bottle and you see the history of the brand, I wouldn't imagine that they would come out with something very modern, edgy. This is more a little bit on the mature side, a little bit old fashioned, but not really. It's very unique, a fragrance that I've never smelled something similar before. It's a spicy floral. It's a spicy rose tuberose fragrance. Uh, mostly I got the cloves and I also get a slight hint of geranium. Another note that I found that she likes to use a lot. So if you love spicy florals, I think you should check this one. So that was rose tuberose. Next fragrances are all inspired by the color red. Is it a coincidence? I don't know, but it seems like a theme here. And the first one I have here is Red Shoes, again made for Jack Fat. And the inspiration behind it is the famous Jack Fat uh, evening dress. So the fragrance should evoke femininity, sensuality. And I definitely get that. So her creations are, in my opinion, not sexy. They are sensual they are deep and this is not an exception it's a fruity floral with berries red currant rose and again the geranium which you can get here uh, it has also a little bit of aldehydes which i personally don't like but i see it appropriate to the inspiration if that makes any sense and it's again a very unique and not your typical fruity floral so I would say with her creations, generally speaking, is not for someone who is a beginner uh, in niche. So definitely sample before buying. So that was a red shoes. Another red inspired fragrance is Ruby Kona. The name comes from Ruby and Icon fused together. She made this one for pure distance and this perfume house has perfume extray. So it has 28% perfume oil and this is very strong. It's again a fruity floral but compared to the other two this is more sweet. It has a lot of floral notes but what I mostly smell here is orange blossoms. It has also patchouli, musky. You have a little bit of a creamy touch in it as there is ylang ylang and again cloves. I don't get it much, but there is in the background a slight bite to this fragrance and this is not quite challenging. So I would say this is for someone who doesn't want a very challenging fragrance and loves orange blossom. I think you would like this one. So that was Ruby Kuna. And the last red inspired fragrance is 
Monome Rouge that, and she created this one for Majda Bekali and this one I can't even categorize as a floral fragrance it's very ambery and spicy I have to admit I did not like it in the opening but in the dry down I like it it's not my favorite but I like it and it is inspired by the color red so it's a fragrance that can represent the color red even for someone who is born blind. So it has to be powerful, enveloping, vivid, scandalous, enchanting, narcotic, majestic, and hypnotic. <laughs> A lot of adjectives here. Does it smell like all these adjectives? Um, <laughs> for me personally, uh, when I smell this fragrance, I don't see the color red. I definitely see the color red with Rubicona. Uh, anyway, the fragrance itself is an incense rose. And I think what I don't like so much about this fragrance is the incense. Incense here is quite predominant. Uh, it has also a rosy touch. It's ambery, it's warm, slightly spicy. Uh, so this is definitely for oriental lovers. And I find that this is her style. Cécile Zaroukian really shines uh, when creating oriental fragrances. Not that the other fragrances were bad, but here, I don't know, I can feel her personality somehow. In Fragrantica, people compare this one to Amouage Epic. I don't get that so much. Yeah, you get the, her signature, her DNA, but they are not very similar fragrances. So I would say this is a fragrance for someone who loves incense, oriental, spicy fragrances. So Monome Rouge. Now let's get to Nanche from Nishane, a powdery floral. And people compare it to Love Chloe, the discontinued fragrance from Chloe. I had this one, but I decluttered it, and I don't remember how that one smells, so I can't compare it. It's powder, yes, but it has this coldness to it, in, in a way. And honestly, apart from the powderiness that I think there is iris, I get a little bit of rose musk, but I can't distinguish any other notes, so I'm going to tell you what is written here. It has in the top yuzu, bergamot, carrot seed, and cardamom. And in the mid rows, jasmine, ylang ylang, water fruits, and flowers. And in the base, iris, powdery notes, musk, patchouli, and sandalwood. And this fragrance to me is not so unique. Uh, yeah, and it's a little bit mature. I mean, all her fragrances are on the mature side. Um, yeah, it has something old to it. So I would say this is one of the fragrances from the Discovery set that I don't like very much. But again, I'm not a fan of Iris. I wouldn't say powdery fragrances, but definitely Iris is not my favorite note in fragrance. So this is maybe why I don't like it so much. But I would say if you love musky, powdery florals, you would like this one. So that was Nanche from Nishane. Now let's get to one of her iconic creations, and that is Epic Woman from Amouage. Fun fact, this is her first fragrance. And this is a fresh, spicy, rose, amber fragrance. <laughs> there is a lot going on with this one. It has almost a slightly green touch to it. So the notes here on the card are not the same like on Fragrantica. And honestly, uh, like the notes that are different between the two, I can't really detect <laughs> in the fragrance, so I don't know. Mostly, as I said, it's rose, it's spicy. I get like cumin. Uh, is it here? Yeah, yeah, they say here it has cumin. It's woody, it's ambery. It's a fragrance that I can't describe. I'm so sorry. This fragrance you have to smell for yourself. Um, the fun thing is that I just said that people compare uh, Monome Rouge to Epic and I can't see the similarity actually on cards, like on paper. I get it. There's definitely mm, differences, but I get that 
there is a lot of similarities going on. My skin actually is <laughs> quite different. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, always with fragrances, test on your skin. I appreciate it from an artistic point of view, but it's not my personal taste. Let's put it like that. So that was Epic Woman from Amouage. And since we talked about Epic, let's go to Amouage material. This one came out last year. And this is a stunning fragrance. Stunning fragrance. It's a masterpiece in my opinion, and it deserves the hype. Is it everybody's cup of tea? No. Is it safe blind? No. Even if you love vanilla, you have to test this fragrance before buying it. For This is to me vanilla done right. As you all know, I'm not the biggest fan of vanilla, but this one I really like. Again, in the opening, I did not like it very much. This is for me normal for oriental fragrances. Uh, so I always make sure when I test oriental fragrances to leave it a little bit on my skin before judging. It's vanilla, it's ambery, it's warm, it's addictive, it's it has this almost mystic vibe to it in a way. I don't know, this is my personal experience. It's one of the best releases of 2021, hands down. And for me, this is a masterpiece. And I have to be honest with you guys, I rave about this fragrance and I really like it, but I'm not going to buy it because it's a fragrance that I highly, highly appreciate from an artistic point of view, but it doesn't represent me. So I know even if I buy this fragrance, not going to wear it a lot. Uh, so this is why, although you will find me rave about this fragrance, you will not find it in my collection, at least for now. And I like all Amouage fragrances, when it comes to longevity and sillage, <laughs> it's amazing. It's extremely long lasting. It's not a beast mode, I wouldn't say that, but it has a strong projection. So that was Amouage material. And since we talked about vanilla, let's get to another vanilla fragrance. And that is Nishane Ami. And this is a fragrance that is definitely worth the hype. The hype is real. It's an amazing fragrance. It's stunning, actually. Again, a masterpiece. It's a spicy, fresh, slightly green vanilla. Um, I think that if you love fragrances like Odwell from Diptyque, you will like this one. Not that they are similar. I definitely prefer Annie to Odwell, by the way. Uh, but I think if you love Odwell, you will also love Annie. And the things that I find that a lot of influencers feel to mention when reviewing this fragrance is that I don't find it a safe blind buy. Of course, all fragrances you have to test. But I also know that when a fragrance is really hyped up, people tend to blind buy it. I don't find this one um, a, blind, a safe blind buy. It's not a fragrance for everybody. Uh, and I actually saw a lot of people buy this fragrance and then declutter it. Not because it's a bad fragrance. Actually, they all find it really nice, but they just don't wear it enough. So it's not that I'm saying that it's a challenging fragrance, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. And you have to test it and see if it's something that you would actually wear. Because the scent itself, I find almost difficult for anyone to dislike. It's a very likable fragrance. It's an amazing fragrance, but there is a difference between you personally wearing the fragrance and liking it or even loving it. Sorry for the rambling, but I thought that I had to mention that. This is a fragrance that I would definitely love to smell on other people, that I would love to have in my collection just to sniff, but I'm not sure that I would wear it. Um, but it's a stunning fragrance. So that was Nishane Ani. Ah, and by the way, it's unisex. It is sweet, yes, but I find it's unisex. You may be leaning slightly, slightly feminine, but overall it's a unisex fragrance. Like, by the way, material. Material is called material woman, but I find it unisex. But yeah. Now let's move to a fragrance that is extremely unique, not only because of the scent, but also because of the brand. This is Limonach Kanz. 
uh, five and this is a very unique fragrance because it's a very exclusive brand so i've never heard about this brand before until this discovery set and i'm quite surprised that Jouvois decided to include this sample in the discovery set this is a brand that has limited bottles they cost a lot and the packaging is over the top there is gold anyway and then that's it uh, the fragrance is gone and the people who have the bottle can reorder the fragrance but it will remain for this limited amount of people so extremely exclusive so if you want to smell unique and exclusive and you have the money go for it this is uh extremely woody spicy amber fragrance it's a monster uh, it projects like crazy and it's extremely long last you can really smell the quality and i will read the inspiration or the words of cecile zarukian herself so she says about this fragrance it's a carnal composition playing on the contrast of a thunderbolt uh, so ex explosive quote, bright accents symbolizing the love at first sight. Blend at perfection with the overwhelming feeling of charm, seduction and consuming desire. Incontrollable fatal attraction. If I smell this fragrance, would I think about love at first, uh, about love at first sight, about all this? no not so much however the fragrance itself is amazing actually <laughs> it is seductive i have to say and very 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 addictive and this is not for the faint of heart this is definitely for strict oriental lovers unisex leaning masculine mm, but it's so good it's it's rich it's deep i really like this fragrance actually so yeah that was le monarch now let's move to jevois uh, so cecile created also for jevois and the one that i hear a lot of people talk about is remember me and this is a tea a gourmand tea fragrance and it's and no it's not similar to winter palace from memo this is very lactonic uh, Winter Palace, yes, is a gourmand tea scent, but it's not lactonic. I would say milk is the first note in this fragrance. Uh, there is a tea note, there is some spices, there's also frangipani. If I remember correctly, she mentioned that this fragrance was created when Jebois opened a branch in Qatar and they wanted to create a Karakti uh, fragrance. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the tea scent, it's a spicy tea with milk. And she added frangipani, I think, because she passed by a frangipani tree. And this is not a challenging fragrance at all all if you love lactonic fragrances and you love tea i think you would definitely like this one i personally don't like so much lactonic fragrances maybe because they turn a little bit acidic on my skin so i like them but everybody is different i would say this is a stable for um, lactonic fragrance lovers out there the only thing that i have with this fragrance is since i'm familiar with that tea i would have imagined more spice in this fragrance there is a hint of spiciness but um, i don't get it so much i want it more <laughs> but anyway it's a beautiful fragrance for those who love the genre and i also love the name very much you remember me it's a nice name anyway so that was remember me from je Vois. last fragrance from the discovery set is private label another one created for je Vois and i'm in love i am in love oh this is so good <laughs> this is so 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 good this is my favorite from the discovery set unfortunately it's totally masculine this is a beautiful 
leather patchouli vetiver fragrance it's amazing it's so good so so good oh this is definitely in my top 10 fragrances for men it's amazing oh love it love it love it if you love fragrances like uh, how it's called uh, Ancre Noir à la Extreme from Lalique you would definitely like this one I personally don't like that one this is amazing and the thing is that I don't know vetiver and leather and these notes are not my vibe at all even in men fragrances I have a little bit of problems with leather vetiver and patchouli it depends so I am surprised that I love this fragrance as much as I do. I tested it on my skin and I was continuously sniffing myself. I want love, love at first sniff for me. And it has stunning performance. This remained on me the whole day. It didn't go away. It projected and I, <laughs> and I sprayed like just a tiny amount it's really an amazing fragrance highly highly recommend it for you gentlemen out there check private label from uh, Jouvois especially if you love patchouli leather and vetiver and you love uh, fragrances like Lalique Ancre Noir à l'Extreme this is much much better love it love it so that was private label from Jouvois. So these were the fragrances that were included in the discovery set. Of course, she did much more. Some I am dying to try, like for example, Stairway to Heaven from Jules Emad. Can't wait to test that one. Fortunately, the sample on Jouvois is sold out now for quite a while. And I also am intrigued by her creations for um, Laboratorio Olfativo. Overall, I am really impressed by her. And although I have to mention that I find that her creations, generally speaking, are not safe blind buys, uh, so not exactly targeted for niche beginners. And I personally don't own any of her fragrances, but I definitely appreciate her work and I appreciate her art. Uh, a lot of these fragrances even if it's something that I wouldn't wear myself. If I was into like collecting fragrances, I would definitely get almost all of the fragrances that I mentioned. So Cecile Zarukian is one of these perfumers that if you see her name on a, on a perfume, you know it's good. So my five favorites, uh, is, number one is definitely private label. <laughs> I love this one, it's amazing. and yeah i don't know two and three i would be between material and any number four i would go with le monarch and number five i would go with yeah this is difficult i think should true sound but i may change my mind so these were my favorites so happy women's day please tell me in the comments down below if you tested any of cecile zarokian's creations and what do you think about them? And how do you celebrate International Women's Day in your country? Here in Italy, we have the tradition of the mimosa flower. So um, it's a tradition that goes back, I think, to World War II. So we gift each other a mimosa flower. This is the tradition here in Italy. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumb up and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload any new video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao.